Okay, there we go. Got that, uh, just got the confirmation. The recorder is rolling. So we're ready to rock and roll here, folks. So once again, thank all of you for um, joining me here this Wednesday afternoon. I know, um, I know it's easy to get caught up in doing other things, especially kind of middle of the day here, but uh, I promise we're going to make this work your while. So I have some really neat things uh, set up for you guys. Uh, but first things first is I just want to point out sitting on your screen right there, facebook.com slash groups slash serious mortgage marketing. If you haven't joined us on our Facebook marketing group, I recommend that you do so. Okay. Uh, it's a free to join group. And basically all you got to do is um, just click to request to join. It's a private group. So that just means that, you know, um, all your connections and friends on Facebook don't see, you know, what you're chatting about. It's a place for loan officers to go and ask questions and, and share ideas with each other. And it's a great community, uh, several thousand of us on there. I run that group. So go join us um, if you can. Next, if you haven't been on one of our webinars before, folks, the way it works is really simple. Um, I don't believe in or at least for me personally, I prefer, <laughs> I know some people disagree, but my personal preference is when I run a webinar, I prefer to do it completely live, no notes. I do these things live by the seat of my pants uh, for a couple of reasons, but number one, most importantly, because of your feedback. When you guys are chatting and asking questions and, and sharing um, your answers to questions I ask, that is what really dictates the direction we're going to go in. OK, I don't like these pre-scripted, you know, really uh, uh, um, just pigeonholing everything type of webinars. This is live. OK, so we're also going to be uh, talking about business plans and even setting some goals here live together. All right. So if you stick around to the very end, uh, I got some things I'm going to share with you and some links where you can go and get some documents to help you with your business plan. All right. The next thing is, as you guys know, it's uh, been a tradition of mine for the past two years now, and I call it the boom rule. And that boom rule is simply that if you guys like where I'm going with something, just type the word boom, B-O-O-M, into the chat box. And the more booms I see showing up, uh, the more I know, hey, you know what, people like this, I'm going to expand on it even more so. OK, so I'm constantly opening up. I got this little window off to the side um, of questions that you guys are asking. And when I see a bunch of booms showing up, that B-O-O-M really stands out over all the other comments. So I go, wow, OK, people really like this. OK, so um, all right, guys, we're ready to rock and roll. So the first thing that I want to do that you guys may have noticed when registering with this webinar is as soon as you registered, it redirected you to a question page right? So that question page is just basically asking you, how do you feel about the year 2017? Do you think it's going to be better or worse than last year? Uh, what do you, what are your biggest concerns? Do you feel like you're prepared? Just basically ask four or five quick questions because I was trying to put my finger on the pulse to figure out really what were your guys' biggest concerns, okay? And where were you focused? So here's what I want to do is the first thing I want to do is show you the results what were those comments? What, what are you guys really concerned about? What are you guys really looking at for 2017? Okay, so um, typically we get about 25 to 30 percent of the folks that will join us on a webinar will fill those things out. So it held true here today as well. So the first, um, well, actually, uh, let me just pop through here real quick. So I've already to told you guys what we're going to cover today. So we're going to talk about our problems. We're going to talk about reasons for failure and hitting our goals. And then we're going to actually do some live goal planning and scheduling uh, right here on the webinar. So here's the results of that questionnaire I was telling you about. First question was, do you feel prepared for 2017? So we got 46 yeses. We got 92 no's, and then we got 37 I don't know's. <laughs> so, so 37 people weren't really sure how to feel or what to think, you know, as far as their level of preparation. But this just really stood out to me that we have almost, um, or right at actually, exactly double the number of people said no as they did yes for whether they feel prepared or not. And we still had another 37 people. Almost as many people said, I don't know if I feel prepared as did yes. So very, very close. And uh, this is just a quick export um, from GoToWebinar showing the answers that came in, um, or at least some of them there. So question number two was, what are your biggest concerns? 
about 2017. So here were the top three answers. And that's what you see here in the second row of that CSV file was uh, number one was rising interest rates. And, and how accurate is that? Do you guys agree? Does that, does that sound about right? Rising interest rates is probably one of the biggest things that you hear people talking about for 2017 is, you know, hey, well, we're already looking at probably multiple um, increases throughout 2017, even after the first increase in 2016. Um, uh, right on its heels, almost uh, dead even with that was marketing. So a lot of people were saying now in marketing, keep in mind, not everybody just said the word marketing. Some people said things such as marketing. Some said lead generation. Some said how to use Facebook ads to get leads, you know, but those were all marketing related. So we had almost as many people were concerned about their marketing activities as they were the rising interest rates. Um, and then this one here, this the in third place was fewer borrowers in the market can kind of be hinged on answers number one for 77 I can dump another 56 on top of that because most people were saying there's gonna be fewer borrowers in the market I feel because of the higher interest rates that's why a lot of folks were concerned about the number of borrowers okay so a lot of people are asking well what do I do about these rising interest rates how do I tie my marketing to a more purchase oriented market when not as many people are going to be able to benefit from refi Okay, and then I asked, well, do you feel that this year will be better or worse for you? Now, here's, here, here's the disconnect. This is the, the complete opposite of what you'd expect based off of the way the answers were coming is we had far more people saying better than worse. So when I asked, do you feel ready or prepared for the new year, there were far more people, twice as many people said no as they did yes, but there's still 127 of those responses came back saying, yeah, I actually still feel 2017 is going to be better year than 2016. Now, there's still a big chunk of people out there that said it's going to be worse. And then there was a big chunk of people, 38 of them said, well, I don't know what to expect. But still, I didn't expect when I was going through the answers, I didn't expect this many people to feel optimistic about it after reading how many people said they weren't ready. So guess what that tells me? That tells me that a lot of people feel that they have the potential to make this year better. It's just they don't know exactly how to go about making that happen. <laughs> But they still feel that the, the 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 potential is there, so that's that's good. I'm I'm glad. I don't like uh, seeing so many people feel uh, doom and gloom, right? I, I want people to feel excited about their prospects of making this a better year. Okay, so is do, are are you guys on board with um, kind of the way the responses have gone so far? I mean, is is that really where you guys feel you're at? Did I miss anybody? <laughs> um, and then I asked the question, what? Are you 100% dedicated to making happen in the new year? And the top three answers were, number one, lead generation. So I am dedicated to figuring this lead generation stuff out. Okay, So you can look over here on the far right. Um, this is just a, a, a brief excerpt from um, the CSV file popped out from GoToWebinar showing what those answers were. Uh, a, a very close second was social media. So it's kind of hand in hand with answer number one, uh, but 58 folks said social media, primarily Facebook. Um, third place was referrals. 42 people said they really want to get the referral stuff figured out. Usually they were talking about realtors, so it had something to do with real estate agents. I need to get more re referrals from agents. Um, and I know it says top three answers, but I put a fourth in here simply because they were almost tied. So we had 41 people said their website. They really want to get their website stuff figured out. So 42 said referrals, 41 said websites, and then we had 58 and then 64 for social media and lead generation. So does that sound about right with where you guys are at? Right? Any Anything that um, I need to add to this as far as big concerns for the new year or what we're going to be focused on? All right. Good deal. Good deal. Okay. So, so now I have a question for you guys, and feel free to go ahead and type this into the chat box. I want to ask you guys, how many of you guys are familiar with what a vision board is? Yay or nay? Is there anybody here that's not familiar with the term vision board when it comes to goal planning? Okay, it looks like everybody's saying yes, yes, yes. Okay, so 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 I got I got one I got one person said no. Okay, there's another one. All right. So a couple folks um, who haven't really used a, vi a vision board before. Basically what a vision board is is it's basically setting up a visual reference that you put in a very visible place that you're going to see often and daily. And it is visual reminders 
of why you do what you do. What are your goals for the new year? So let's say, um, I know, I know um, you guys know I'm a big car guy, right? Okay, so I know what's going on my my vision board is just sold the, the weekend toy. Now it's time for another fun um, uh, weekend vehicle. I'm a big gearhead. So I'm going to be putting a nice high resolution picture of my dream car that I fully intend on getting this year. All right, so that's going on my vision board. All right, I'm moving to the West Coast this year as well. All right, so I have some really, really big plans for the West Coast. Okay, I'm going to be more in the ocean and doing all this fun stuff. So that's going on my vision board. All right, um, got a family member launching a really neat new business that I'm taking part in, I'm helping with, okay? So that goes on my vision board. What are our goals for that? These are things that you can look at and feel inspired. It reminds you in a split second, this is why I do what I do. So the reason I was asking if you guys are familiar with the vision board is, or some people call it a vision board, some people call it a dream board, both mean the exact same thing. So now I have a question for you guys. Let's say that you could only put one or two items on your vision board. Tell me right now, what is the most exciting thing that would go on your vision board, your dream board? What is the biggest thing that, that, that gets you the most excited, the biggest goal that could possibly go onto your vision board for 2017? Go ahead, go ahead and type it out now. All right. All right. So... Okay, so uh, a, a new home. All right, Travis. Nice to see you, Travis. Okay, there's a, there's a dream home for Jeff. Okay, I want to be debt-free. Awesome, Tom. Uh, more cash accumulation. Four vacations. Last year I got two in. More family vacations. Travel more. Traveling. Traveling. Oh, there's more traveling. Debt-free. More time with family. Home additions. There's more traveling and traveling. Um, getting a ton of agents so we don't have to call refi leads. <laughs> uh, debt free. All right. So all debt paid off. I'm, I'm seeing some awesome, awesome things. Okay. So, so you guys know what you want. It did. How, how long did it take you guys to figure that out? Really? I mean, did you have to think about it more than 10 seconds? Because I, it looks like I've, I'm at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 20, 30. So I had about 47 responses there in less than a minute that you guys knew. Okay, yeah, there you go. Seconds. It took you seconds. Why? Because you know what you want out of life, right? It's not difficult to dream. The difficult part for most people is now, how do I go from having that dream to not just making it a reality, but feeling confident that I can, am 100% confident that I'm going to make it a reality, that it's not just a dream, but now it's a goal. Because goals that aren't written down with a plan of action are just dreams. Dreams are nice to have, but we call them dreams and not goals for a reason. Oftentimes it's because we don't feel like it's ever really going to happen. But once we take and, and just give it a little tweak and we start calling them goals instead of dreams, suddenly it's, you know what, I, I really feel that I am going to make this a reality. I feel that I'm going to make this happen. Right? So it's, it's, it's easy to dream, but it, it seems to be very, very difficult to turn those into goals and then structure a plan. And there's a reason for that. And it's because oftentimes a lot of the advice and instruction on how to go about setting up our plans for, uh, for the year, our marketing plans, our business plans, oftentimes it's bad advice. A lot of that advice that's out there we call junk advice because they're, they're giving you um, a step-by-step -step process that's not really going to get you there. Okay? So now we're going to talk about the reasons why most – Goal setting programs don't work, and I'm not telling you guys this based on um, just some theory or, oh, hey, this is just my personal opinion. I've spent a lot of time and a lot of money myself personally working with some folks and hiring some folks to help me over the past couple of years because I felt like, man, I'm setting all these goals for myself, and, and it just seems to be insanely difficult to hit them sometimes, and not even just sometimes, most of the time. So I knew I was doing something wrong. And there's some really, really good guys out there um, that, that are just uh, top-notch experts on what we call the mental game and, and helping you reach those goals, you know. Um, and I, I bought a lot of those programs, and they weren't cheap, but they were worth every single penny. So the first thing that I learned was that a lot of my goals I was setting, well, 
your brain does has a difficult time viewing them as goals because they're so far out. Okay, it's like again, and I've used this uh, many many times before in previous webinars. If if I tell you, hey, you know what? You can let's just say uh, fitness goals, just for the heck of it. Let's just say I said, hey, you know what? You can be in absolutely perfect shape if you follow this plan, and um, 19 months down the road, you'll finally see your results. How many of you guys get excited about that? I know I wouldn't. It would be very, very difficult to stick with all the eating restrictions, all the, the difficulty that, you know, how much time you spend in the, g the, the gym. But what if you, you literally got zero results for 19 months that you could uh, view as a reward, but then at the end of those 19 months, okay, great, now here's the reward. Not many people would be able to stick to that because our brains want instant gratification. So we're setting our goals way too far out. OK. Oftentimes, the things that we set for ourselves, the tasks that we set for ourselves on a day to day basis also violate the two minute rule. Anybody here familiar with the two minute rule when it comes to goals and, and uh, consistency and daily activity? The two minute rule, uh, which, which is very interesting because it actually came um, from uh, some neurological studies of the human brain. And uh, what it says is that when you are doing one thing, one activity. And you should be doing another activity. If it takes more than two minutes for you to get set up to begin the second activity. Every minute over two minutes, it becomes exponentially, not just more difficult, but exponentially more difficult and more likely that you will not get that task done. There's just something in our brains that if something takes more than two minutes to transition from one activity to another, there's a huge amount of resistance there. So what that means is that when we're setting goals for ourselves but not looking at the efficiency of our day-to-day -day activities, we're, we're, we're exponentially increasing the likelihood that we're not going to stick to those goals. And it's not because we're lazy. It's not because we're, hey, we're natural procrastinators or any of those negative things. It's just, hey, we are human. Our brains will, will most definitely go to war with us if, if we ignore these things that, that, we, that science tells us, hey, if you want to stick to something, here's what you need to do. Because we can either fight against human nature or we can figure out how to hack it. Right. Low confidence is another another big one. Um, a lot of people say, you know, well, hey, I have this goal. But then when you really, really talk to them, and I've had the opportunity to talk to thousands of loan officers and sometimes some really uh, lengthy and deep conversations. And really, when you start digging, you come to find out a lot of these folks, they have these goals, but they really, really don't plan on hitting them. They, or they, they don't feel that they have a, a standard good chance of hitting those goals. And low confidence, guys, uh, we, we got to we got to boost that. And we're going to talk about that today as well. Um, also, no obvious path. And this is directly connected to number three is oftentimes the low confidence stems not from the fact that, hey, um, you know, I feel like I'm some bad loan officer or something. No, no. A lot of awesome loan officers out there that still have low confidence. And that low confidence stems from, well, how can I have confidence if I don't know what I need to be doing? Right. Um, and then this one is is very similar to the number one, but there are some differences, and that's no rewards for a long time. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that, hey, we have to hit our goal in order to have instant gratification, but are we rewarding ourselves? Do we have something that is uh, n just tapping into that natural risk versus reward aspect of our brains? You know, when our when when we when we make ourselves do something. That, we, that goes against what we would normally do or something that could have been difficult to get ourselves to do, to stop procrastinating and do this and do that. If you don't reward yourself, we're not doing much to solidify those habits. We want to turn something into a habit. There has to be. There has to be some sort of reward. That doesn't necessarily mean we have to go out and grab some big dinner and gorge on ice cream and chocolate or anything like that or go buy you know, ourselves some... Um, you know, weekend toy or whatever, but there does have to be some sort of reward. And then finally, there's too much learning. And it's not that learning is a bad thing, but, but when we try to throw a bunch of learning on our plate when we're already, A, overwhelmed, B, trying to cram more stuff in than we have time for, plus we're trying to learn something new, plus we, once we learn it, then we have to implement it. Well, now the other four 
pillars of what drives a successful business are ignored and then everything falls apart. And that can be extremely, extremely frustrating. Right? So, um, so these are the reasons why we run into difficulty. And, and I'm just going to expand on them just here for just a brief moment. Number one, um, if, when we're talking about instant gratification, guys, and setting our rewards too far out, again, this is something that's in our makeup. It's, it's, it's survival, right? From tens of thousands of years ago, if you go um, back to a point before modern society was even dreamt up yet, when a lot of people survived by uh, basically going out and hunting and gathering and uh, trying to build our own shelters and whatnot, um, we weren't worried about what's happening a month, a month from now, a year from now, two years from now, three years from now. No, oftentimes survival was a day-to-day -day activity. If your head's in the clouds thinking about, uh, you know, hey, well, what am I going to do a, a year from now or whatever, as opposed to, hey, how am I going to eat today? <laughs> well, what, what happens in that type of an environment, right? I mean, you, you have to be focused at that point. You had to be focused on your day-to-day activities. Otherwise, you're too busy dreaming about what's happening a year from now and uh, stumble across one of these, right? <laughs> okay, so it was a much more wild environment. So our, our brains developed as a survival mechanism to be very, very focused on the short term because that meant survival. You know, I can only go X amount of days without water, X amount of days without food, right? So um, we can fight against that or we can try to hack it. And today we're going to hack it, right? So we also talked about low confidence due to having no clear path. Or sometimes we even distract ourselves by getting involved in too many things at once. If there are too many unopened doors sitting in front of us that we're wanting to walk through, guys, oftentimes we're going to basically overthink ourselves into analysis paralysis and we're not going to take any action at all. Okay? And that's where the low confidence comes from. So, so what do we do about that? Well, here's, here's the answers, guys. Here's what we need to fuel ourselves to reach our goals in 2017. There are five pillars, five biller, pillars that we as humans need for transformational success. And again, this isn't something that, hey, I just dreamt up one day. This is something that was taught to me, something that I learned. Okay? So number one being mental focus. That one's obvious, right? You got to have focus. You got to have consistency. Number two, our emotional energy. Three is our physical energy. Four is our biological needs, our food, our sleep, you know, our exercise habits, and so forth. And then five, our personal lives, our relationships, our social lives, our family lives. These are the, the five pillars that make up a successful person. And a lot of people really want to focus on just one or two of those things. Oftentimes we say, well, hey, I'm trying to focus on my business here. Why the heck are we talking emotions and the touchy feely stuff and, and, you know, exercise, food and sleep. And that's because we are machines guys. And we can't ignore that. We are mechanisms. <laughs> if you take a high performance vehicle, let's say a McLaren 675. Okay. If we take that McLaren and we don't change our oil, we don't take care of the tranny. We don't check our tires, but we just keep rip-roaring around the track all the time. What's, what's going to happen? A disaster, right? High performance means high maintenance. We need to pay attention to our needs because how many times, if, if, if things are going terrible at home and you're constantly feeling sick, ill, run down, and low energy, how great do you think you're doing with your marketing, with your sales, going out and getting referrals from realtors and doing these things. When we feel run down, it shows in our business as well. And that's why we're going to focus on these five core pillars. And we're, but we're going to focus on them in a really interesting way. And when, when I talk about these things, unfortunately, a lot of people start to get a little overwhelmed and say, well, you know what? Um, that I'll, I'll, just, I'll just focus more. You know, I don't really need anything. I'm just going to focus more. I'm going to go and I'm going to do better with my uh, personal life. I'm going to go and I'm going to work out this year. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to market more. I'm going to do those uncomfortable things. And when I hear people say that thing, I say, well, you know, good for you for, for the, the, the enthusiasm. 
But unfortunately, that's a recipe for disaster. Because we call that trying to be the Incredible Hulk. It's when you think that you're just going to, through sheer force of will and brute force, you're going to make all these things happen. But the problem is, here in the real world, the universe doesn't make things that easy for us. There's always a curveball. There's always things that are frustrating and stressful that are going to deal that we're going to have to deal with. And uh, with human nature, unlike the Incredible Hulk, you don't get stronger as you get angry. <laughs> when you get more frustrated, you get more irritated, you get more upset, we tend to perform at a lower level, not a higher level. Okay, so we're not going to uh, Incredible Hulk our way into success this year. We need to plan it properly, okay? Brains over brawn. And you know what? I finally, I just, I just reached one of my, my big goals for 2016 right now, right this very second. I told myself sometime this year I was going to find a way to work in a picture of the Hulk into one of my webinars, and I finally did it. Yes. <laughs> so I can die a happy man now. I used to be a big Hulk fan as a kid, so I just thought that would be uh, interesting. But it was relevant because, again, it's, it's called trying to incredible Hulk your way into success, and it just doesn't work. It's too much. We have to make things easier for ourselves by doing it smart, right? Otherwise, you're going to burn yourself out. So let's let's start talking about mental focus, and then I'm going to show you guys some some guides and some some documents that are going to come in really really handy for you here. They're going to help you with this. So it's really easier to focus on things that impact you here and now. Okay. So you guys may have heard of some of these programs out there, like one called the the the, the 90 day year. There's another called the 120 day year. Um, there's another called uh, three months to a great year. And, and they're all great programs. And you know what they all have in common? Is they have removed the focus away from saying, here's what my goal is for the new year. And instead saying, I'm going to treat the next three months as if those are my year. They're phases or modules, whatever you want to call them. And we create a theme for that 90-day period. And now, instead of our goals being, hey, by December 2017, here's what I want to have accomplished. Instead, it's, you know what? By the last day of March, here's what I will have accomplished. But here are my daily and weekly and monthly mini goals that are going to get me to that big picture, if you will. Okay? So do you guys see the difference here is by shifting our focus, it's like that whole elephant. You know, how do you eat an elephant? Okay, we're instead of taking on that big elephant, we're just, let's just focus on the next few bites by turning these into 90-day phases. So you have, you have your four quarters throughout the year. And our mini goals now seem much more obtainable. And since, since these mini goals are things that are happening much, much sooner and pretty much right here in front of us because we're focused on the day-to-day -day and weekly activities instead of saying, oh, you know what, by December, I need to get this done. Oh, well, psh, December's over 12 months away. I got plenty of time. No, it's, hey, crap, you know what? Within 90 days, I need to have my entire web presence taken care of, and I have this list of mini goals and daily activities that are going to get me there. So I need to get started. Here's what I'm committed to doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and it's a, this may seem like a small distinction, guys, but it really does create a night and day difference. And you see this link here. Um, I put this link out here for you. Let me, um, let me go live to the web here. Okay, so let me pull up this link for you guys. Now, as we go along, I actually put up a just a, a, a brief mini page, and this mini page is going to be used constantly throughout this webinar. And I have some questions in here that I want you to answer, folks. And, and there's actually rewards for answering these questions. By the way, um, let's let's talk about a couple of them. And I want you guys to ask yourselves these questions right now. Name two or three small things that you could do weekly that would make your business better so are there two or three small now when I say something is a small activity or small action what I mean is something that takes less than an hour for you to implement 
not some big, huge uh, change to your business, but what are two or three small things that you could be doing on a weekly basis that you feel can make your business better? Or maybe you've known you should have been doing this for a while, but you've just had difficulty working it into your schedule. So, so I want you to ask yourself these questions, and I want you to add them. Add them on this page. It's 2017faststart.pagedemo.co, and I want you to write your answer out here. Okay, the next question is name at least one, or preferably more, one way that you are likely to sabotage your own success if you're not mindful. If you're not, if you're not paying attention to it. What's at least one, maybe even two or three habits that you have that tend to get in your own way if you're not really paying attention to it? And then how are you going uh, you to stop yourself from doing this? How are you going to stop yourself from sabotaging your own success? Because oftentimes we do. We get in our own way, don't we? I, I, I'm just as guilty of that as anybody else, guys. I know this. And, and it could be very frustrating, but by putting pen to paper here, and by acknowledging these shortcomings and saying, hey, you know what, but if I'm mindful of it, if I'm paying attention to it and I have it written down and I'm seeing this on a regular basis, I can, I can avoid or at least be aware when it's happening and now I can put a stop to it. I can tweak it. I can modify it. Okay? So, so mental focus. Now, um, the re... There we go. Oh, I see some more questions coming over here. Now, I'll get to your questions here in just a moment here, folks, but I, I see plenty of awesome questions coming over, and I'm, I just want you to know I'm not ignoring you. I will most definitely be getting to this. So let's, let's uh, talk about something else here. We oftentimes, our biggest problem is time, is we're, we're always cramming and feel like we're behind. And we have a million things on our shoulders. So I also want you to name one thing that you can say no to that consistently wastes your time on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, on a monthly basis? What are some things that you let creep into your schedule or, or dominate your day, dominate your schedule that you can start saying no to? Because the more things that we say no to, that frees up more things that are productive that we can say yes to. And uh, one way that the, uh, the, 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 the 90-day year type programs uh, really promote, that, that do an awesome job of this, is what's called the Daily Priority Matrix. And it's often referred to as the Eisenhower Method. And basically what it is, is it's a daily activity sheet. And, and by the way, I recommend printing out an activity sheet every day. Not just doing it online or on your computer, but actually printing one out. There's something about that tactile sensation of writing it down and seeing it and placing it somewhere where you're forced to look at it that makes you stick to it much better than when it just disappears into cyberspace, right? Um, but basically what we do is we, we make a list of our daily priorities, what we're going to do today or what needs to be done, but then we label them. As we start adding things to our list of things that we need to get done, by labeling them either A, do it now, B, do it later, C, delegate it, or D, if you're not going to do either of these three things, then remove it from your list because it's obviously not as important as you first thought. Maybe, maybe it's something that you can get to, you put it onto net, next week's schedule, or you reassess its value. Is this something, is this really a high payoff activity? Is this something that I really need to be focusing on now? Because if not, there's most definitely always more things that need to be done than we have time to do when we're first getting started, right? So there's plenty of other things that can go on this schedule if I start deleting things that I'm not going to A, do now, B, do later today, or C, delegate. And what it does is it's basically calling us out on our own crap. <laughs> That's all this is doing, guys, is it's just a, a clever method of calling us out on our own crap, as we oftentimes convince ourselves that, that there are certain things that really need to be done and that certain things are more important than they really are, or we convince ourselves that we can get a lot more done than, than we really can. And by forcing it to pass this little test of, am I going to do either A, B, or C? Then if the answer is no, then I'm going to do D. And suddenly, suddenly you become aware of all these things that you had rolling around in the back of your head 
freaking out that you need to get done going, you know what, I feel so much more liberated now because um, a lot of those things just weren't that important. They just really weren't that important. So now I feel like I'm getting much more done rather than ending each day saying, hey, you know what, um, man, I suck. I didn't really get much done on my list like I wanted to. And that's a horrible feeling. But instead, you start ending your day going, wow, you know what? I really trimmed a lot of the fat off of my schedule, and I got done the really important things, the high payoff activities that pay my income. I feel great. And that brings us to what's next on our list, and that's the emotional energy. And a lot of people write this off. But really, guys, the bottom line is if you don't feed your brain what it needs emotionally, you will burn out. And I put this picture here because it's so perfect in that this is really how a lot of our brains work is we, it, we, we rarely get that free time where there's just nothing on your mind anymore, right? We live these incredibly busy lifestyles and there's so much rolling around in our heads. It can be overloading. So if you're not giving your brain what it needs to deal with this, you will burn out. And when you burn out, well, how do you think that plays out for your goals for the year? Or I'm sorry, for the quarter. <laughs> because we are emotional beings. Even the, more, the, the most logical of us, we're not Vulcans, we're emotional beings. They run the show, right? So here's just a couple of things that I put on, on my schedule that helps me. Now, you, you may have different things. So feel free to add what you want to the list, but really the, the only way to recharge myself is to give myself little breaks. And when I started going for just really early morning, when I say early morning, for me, that's like 5 a.m., okay, before the sun's even really up. And it feels great for me to be out and about walking, jogging. I bring the dog out so the dog's getting its exercise. And by the time I come back, I, I feel recharged. I'm starting off my day on a high note feeling charged up. I'm feeling good. Now, that might not be for you. You might think, wow, that sounds horrible. But I'd at least give it a shot because it, it definitely feels great for me. Um, I also, when I start to feel overloaded, a quick 15 to 20-minute break to read something that's interest-related, not business-related, but something that is a personal interest of mine, is definitely helps. It's giving your brain those little bitty breaks. Because without them, when you just cram, 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 cram all day long, it's like they say that by, by the end of your day, your brain has lost about 50 to 60% of its efficiency. You are actually less effective at the end of a workday than you are at the beginning of a workday, especially if you haven't given your brain little breaks to look at something else, a different topic. Otherwise, you just burn yourself out for the day. Um, I love my weekend game nights. We do we do board games, we do card games, we do video games. Sometimes it's just it's a great opportunity to socialize and have some entertainment, have some fun. I like making things and building things. Um, uh, another important thing for me, part of my business, was to get rid of cranky clients. Okay, and I tell, I'm recommending you guys do the same. And you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. And I first started doing that when I started working with real estate agents. Is I found that I had some of the agents that I was working with that always had me on edge. Have you have you ever 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 felt <laughs> that um, somebody was more trouble than they were worth? A referral source, a client, or whatnot. And just every time you're around them or talk to them, they, you're walking on eggshells. So with those types of clients, I, I had to get rid of them. Just fire the clients, guys. If, a lot of people will hold on to clients as if they are life support. When in reality, sure, you might be making money from those clients or referral sources, but if they're making the rest of your day suck, the rest of your week suck, when every time you talk to them, you're, you're, you're toggling your performance level down several notches because they're just sucking that much life out of you. They are, it is not worth it, guys. Fire the cranky clients. Now, I don't mean just, hey, somebody had a bad day or two. That's not what I refer to as a, a cranky client. That, I'm, I'm referring to somebody who is just consistently on that level, just unpleasant and just making your job and your life more difficult than it should be, right? We, we only have, we have a finite amount of emotions, emotional energy that fuels us. So when a particular client or a group of clients are constantly draining you of that, 
you got to fire them. Long drives on scenic roads, that helps, and hobbies. So, so these are some of the things that, that I do that help um, for the emotional energy. All right. Now, keep in mind that the emotional energy is separate from um, the topic or the pillar of personal. OK, so what we'll be talking about that in just a moment as well. Let's talk about the physical energy, guys, our biology. Everything you eat, everything you drink, our sleep level and our activity level, which is exercise. Now, I'm not going to turn this into a big thing, but if you guys have spent any time reading some of the latest scientific articles and breakthroughs in how they're finding that um, all of these things dramatically impact not just how you feel, but also the way even your brain performs. Your, your glucose level, how many antioxidants you're getting, amino acid level, all of those things fuel your brain. So if you just keep bump, jump, dumping a bunch of junk because we're always on the run, 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 it's real easy to always grab fast food, and I'm just as guilty of that as anybody, but I'm constantly trying to go through cycles of cleaning up my 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 diet and what I'm what I'm drinking and my sleep level because it's easy to chop out sleep and say well I'm so busy I need to get up early and then I need to work late but you do that enough time guys and mental fog lethargy constantly just feeling blah you know ugh, you know I'm, I'm just really not feeling well or your, your motivation drops or you start to procrastinate more oftentimes it's because what you have low physical energy it's because something in this list is suffering so even what, how we eat, how we drink, how we sleep, our activity level, all of those things impact our performance at work, right? Not telling you anything new there, but some of, some of the latest articles are, are really exciting that show just how much it impacts you. And I, you know, I like to call it brain fog because that's how it feels to me. It's like I'm trying to look out and see things the way they are, but you know what? It's, it's, it's really hard to do because it's so foggy. I'm, I'm, I just can't really tap into my resources. And then finally, we got our personal, our relationships, and our family, right? We already know that our happiness is directly impacted by, by our relationships, all right, with other people. We're not meant to operate solo and be hermits all the time, right? We, we meet, we're social beings. We, we have to be out there talking to other people. And it's like they say, you are the sum of the four or five people that you spend the most time with, right? The, mo the more time you spend around certain people, the more you take on their characteristics, right? So this doesn't mean that we go out and engage in social interaction just for the sake of social interaction. You know, sometimes you might feel like that's good, but try to focus on the quality. Try to focus on the quality, the folks that inspire you to take things to greater levels. Because when you feel happier on a personal level, it's a lot easier to be happier and enjoy your work to perform better, to go out and do those things. You feel more empowered to do those things that normally you'd think, oh, wow, I can't do that. But now suddenly, wow, you know what? I could take on the world. So I'm going to show you guys some documents here. Um, and again, the link I gave you guys earlier, when, when you fill that out, folks, um, I'm going to email you over some documents just like this that can really, really help you out. And, and this is what I'm talking about when I say to, to have a, a, a planner, to have a, a guide, a daily activities list, um, and, and just fill it out. Fill it out and keep a log of how you're progressing as you go along. And a lot of people think, well, you know what, you know, sometimes I just call it a work diary. You know, I don't need no stupid diary, you know. Well, actually you do. Because how else do you track your success? How else do you call yourself out on your rationalizations? How else do you see those micro-improvements versus micro-slipping back? Right? So it's this little, little dinky little page. It's just a little two-page guide. And basically what I do is I, I identify my top three priorities. Okay? What are my obstacles? Did I start anything last week that I failed to finish? Well, what will I finish this week? You know, uh, on a personal level, or is there anything important that I need to remember or any birthdays, anniversaries or events that I'm going to, friends, family, functions, you know, those types of things. Um, am I worried that I'm going to be distracted or interrupted throughout my work week this week? OK, well, let's name it. Let's identify it. If we identify it and write it down, we can do something about it. Right. Keep an eye out for it. But then my log. So at the end of each week. What progress did I make? What have I achieved? What have I made progress in? What were my successes? What were my wins? What am I proud of? 
You know, give yourself a pat on the back, guys. You're in an industry that's not easy. Right? So, so give yourself credit. What am I grateful for? What have I learned this week? Right? From a personal level, what people will I talk to and thank for this week? Who am I grateful for? Who am I appreciative of? Who has helped me? Because forming those closer bonds um, on a personal and a business level definitely gives you a boost. So this is just a little sheet that originally I'd actually made up for myself, but I just started giving to people that were masterminding with me because it helped me out so much. Um, my weekly action planner, right? These are my goals and personal tasks, and this is how I keep track of my weekly uh, activities. This is a nice little, um, what I call big, lock, big rocks and little rocks. Again, this isn't something I came up with. You've probably even seen something like this before. Um, this has been around for, oh man, decades. And uh, basically what it is, is it's showing uh, how your schedule gets dominated by um, the, 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 the small things, the, the little things. Like if you fill this picture up with a bunch of little rocks and then try to put the big rocks in there, oftentimes it won't fit. But if you put the big rocks in first and then pour the little rocks in, or pebbles, if you will, those pebbles start to slip in between the gaps in the big rocks, and now you can fit everything in. The whole point of the exercise being is your schedule's just like this. If we dominate it with a bunch of low-priority activities, then the really important stuff, the, the high-priority and high-payoff activities, aren't going to be able to fit, and you're going to constantly feel like you don't have enough time. So when we prioritize and we identify what are the top three priorities that we need to be focusing on and we go through and we fill this out, what are my big rocks and what are my small rocks? The small rocks are still important. Don't get me wrong. But the pay high payoff activities are what we need to really focus on. And that's what this little gives you a little visual guide that helps you go through and ask yourself those tough questions and make commitments to the three things you're going to get done each week. All right. So those are those mini goals that we talked about. And that's what these documents really, really helped me to do. Okay. All right. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. All right. So let's uh, give me just a second here. Okay. I'm scrolling through. I see. I, I know I got a ton of questions here, guys. So I will indeed be getting to them. And I hope that you've um, that you found this to be helpful so far in in how we start to view our weeks and how we start to view our days and our months and, and even our entire year. Um, we're basically just reframing. All right, here we go. So back to my back to my slides here. All right. So basically guys you have an option because basically this is you. This you're the engine. You're the machine if you will. And how you fuel it is going to dictate whether you end up with something like this run down little uh, airplane engine over here, little biplane engine over here, or rocket fuel. You know, how are you fueling yourself? And it's the doing these little bitty things is we don't need to make dramatic, huge changes to our businesses oftentimes. All right? Oftentimes it's the little things. It's the keeping ourselves accountable and watching what we're doing by keeping a little log. You know, again, I call it a little, heck, it's a work diary, essentially. And identifying where, where we're spending our time and what we're doing with our day. And what you'll quickly find is, wow, man, I, I didn't realize so much of my week is spent on these low payoff activities. You know, I could have been outsourcing this or delegating this, and I could have been doing that, and I could have been marketing this way and that way, uh, but we're not. Right? Because oftentimes we're focused on these low payoff things. So it's keeping that uh, log, that daily log, and committing ourselves to certain activities that's going to make a world of difference. So once we've built that foundation and established how we run our days, that's when we get to the really big stuff. The stuff that you guys have been waiting for. That's the big questions. And that's, hey, if I'm setting a theme for my 90 days, for my next 90 days, if I'm going to treat it like that's my whole year, I'm going to attack it like that's my whole year. It has to be done in 90 days. Then what am I going to focus on? My audience building, lead generation, social media, real estate referrals, website presence. How am I going to theme this out so that I'm prepared for the higher interest rates of 2017? It's another big question. 
Now, I just put these down here just as an example. Naturally, it doesn't have to be limited to just, uh, um, you know, just these topics. But basically, if I were you, here's what I would do. If I had four 90-day phases throughout the year that I had to give four themes to target, here's what I do. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be in this order. I just kind of threw this out here as if, if I was basically trying to build my foundation so that I could double or triple my income, then I would focus on A, I would want a better website presence because that's you. That's who you are. That's the first thing most people are going to see because the overwhelming, overwhelming, overwhelming majority of people now use the internet to do all their research or at least to kick it off, right? When they're buying a home or heck, if they're doing a niche type loan or they're researching the pros and cons, doesn't matter, they're doing it online. That's where they're going to stumble across you. And as they say, first impressions are lasting impressions. That is now the business card of the 21st century is your website presence. So just to be frank, if it sucks, that's, those are the conclusions they're drawing about you. So I'd build my foundation by making sure, A, I have a powerful, a strong website presence that's SEO friendly. It's um, getting traffic from the search engines. Um, I'm on Google. I'm on Bing. I'm on Yahoo. I'm on the places and found where I need to be found, and I look good, right? I answer people's concerns and questions, and when they see those things, they want to do business with me. So I'd make sure that's taken care of. B, social media, right? We know the heavy emphasis is on Facebook because over three-quarters of all people in the U.S. now are on Facebook, right, and log in weekly mul multiple times a day, more, more often than not. Um, so social media. And that doesn't just mean Facebook, even though the emphasis is there. YouTube is also social media. You know, you got, what, four to five major social media platforms that the bulk of the U.S. is on these days, right? More referrals. I'd focus on that, too. Make sure one of my themes is focused on getting more referrals. Because you know what? I will take a referral over a lead any day of the week. How many guys agree with me? If you had to choose between just getting regular leads or getting referrals, what do you want more of? Referrals, right? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, it, they don't necessarily have to come from realtors. They could come from other sources too. But um, we know that, you know what, in the name of leverage, we know that realtors are constantly out there and they're spending their own dollars marketing their own time talking to people. And heck, if they could be telling them why they need to use me as their loan officer, then boom. Awesome. I'm a very happy loan officer then, right? So I would have a theme for my referrals. And then finally, automation, follow-up, and database marketing. I dump them all into the same bucket because they all feed each other. Automation is going to free up my time. And guess what freeing up my time does? That gives me more emotional energy because it takes emotional energy to, stick, to really sit down and put your nose to the grindstone, doesn't it? Would you guys agree with that statement? Doesn't it take a lot out of you to sit down, and especially if it's something unpleasant when it comes to work? How many of you guys love picking up the phone calling realtors? How many of you guys like cold calling? How many of you guys like sitting down and learning how to build a website or how to set up automation and code and do all those things? Not many of us. So when we actually do sit down and do those things or at least delegate them, you feel good. You feel good that it's done. Man, I don't want to have to do that again anytime soon. So automation, guess what? If I could work 8 to 10 hours less each week while still increasing my income, then that leaves more both physical and emotional energy. And on top of that, my personal life is better because now I have time to spend with people I love and care about. My family, my friends, form those connections. So everything gets better. So that's my whole point, guys, is it's all interconnected. And a lot of guys roll their eyes when I start talking, you know, emotions and personal life and exercise and eating well. But the bottom line is it's all interconnected, whether we want to admit it or not. We are machines, chemical-based machines, right? So because of that, this is how um, I would set up my year. And again, um, depending on where you're at in your business, you might say, well, Chad, you know what, I, I really need to get, um, number four here done first because my website's already doing pretty well, but my automation follow-up and I have this huge database that's not being mined for referrals and that sucks. So that needs to be put into spot number one. Great. Fine. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is just showing an example.
of someone starting from scratch, but you know where you are at with your business, so you know where these need to be slotted in. But the bottom line is, is how many of you guys reached all of your goals in 2016? All of them. How many of you guys? How many of you guys feel like you, you wish you could have reached all your goals in 2016? So what if you could be in a position to where by the end of 2017, all four of these themes were knocked out of the park? What would that do for your income, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, so that's the whole point, guys, is, is where do you focus, how do you focus, and what are you doing on a daily basis? So I want you guys to go to that, that link. I want you to fill it out and answer some of those questions because, as you guys know, I've been telling you guys since, what, October? I've been chatting about in January is when my new mastermind starts. And my goal, one of my personal goals, is I want, I want to help 100 loan officers add six figures to their business in 2017. So I know through, through the uh, four quarters of the year, I know exactly what needs to be done through each quarter to reach that goal. And I'm really stoked about it because I, wanna, I just want to absolutely see these transformations because there's so many talented and awesome and amazing loan officers out there that just aren't realizing their true potential because one of those five pillars, and in some cases multiple pillars, are just not where they need to be. It doesn't mean that we're always going to be at a level or at a scale of uh, 10, on a, a scale of 1 to 10, on all five of those pillars all the time. Sometimes you might be at a 7. Sometimes you might even be at a 6 or feel like you're at a 5. But it's giving attention to all five of those pillars to know that you are performing as well as you can. Nobody's perfect, right? Life isn't perfect. We do hit, hit rough patches. But the more attention that we're paying to the five pillars, we can be mindful of it and do something about it. So what I've prepared, guys, is my mastermind for 2017 is unlike any that I have done in the past. We're doing this in small mastermind style groups. That means tiny groups. You know, um, Oh, about five years ago, I tried to do masterminds in a big, large group before, and I learned my lesson. It's like, you know what? You can't give enough attention to the individual members when you have huge groups. So uh, we're doing small groups, 15 loan officers per group max. We work with each group weekly with simple steps to getting things done. We're covering the themes of Facebook, so lead generation, right? We're covering the themes of realtor referrals and FISBOs. I drop those both in the same bucket because they both feed each other, both realtors and FISBOs. Website presence, so that includes SEO, um, having a, a kick butt website that makes people want to do business with you and converts. That includes lead capture pages and mechanisms, uh, redirects and retargeting and tracking. That includes social media because part of your website presence is that sometimes people are going to find you on YouTube. Sometimes they're going to find you on Facebook. Sometimes they're going to find you, um, you know, on uh, uh, Google Maps. So no matter where they look, Yelp, no matter where they look, you're going to look good. Right? So these are the primary themes that we're going to focus on for 2017. And our focus is to help you transform. So each quarter, we want you to feel like you've taken the action that you, you've you known all this time. Hey, I really wish I could have gotten this taken care of. I really wish I could get this done. And now you have. So sweeping improvements. And it's not just focused. It's not just focused on the business aspect. We're talking five pillars here, guys. And it's the accountability of working not just within the group, but also having the accountability of seeing on a weekly basis how your progress is coming along. And, and let me show you what we do about that, because that was something else. A lot of folks said, well, you know what, it's, it's real easy to just feel overloaded with so much, you know, so much out there, et cetera, et cetera. So, so that's why we started doing, um, and I just started recently making the transitions to uh, project management software. Okay, so that's what you're seeing on your screen right now. Boom. All right, so project management software is so that members can actually log in 
and see what's taking place, the action, you know, hey, here's what's going on, here's what needs to be done. Um, we come down here, we got our notes, we got our files, we got our links, we got our tasks, so we got our calendar, so I can see where everybody's at, you can see where you're at, what needs to be done, and we can communicate back and forth through a project management software. All the downloadable files and everything is all kept in one place. So you got a group of folders, everything that needs to take place, boom. That's what our mastermind's all about, guys. So it's it's much more organized by doing it in such a fashion, right? All right. Let me get back to my slides here. And, and I, I don't worry, guys, I see the questions. I'm definitely going to be getting to them very, very shortly. So my point being, folks, is um, let's take a look at what would be done in a typical quote-unquote theme. All right, so a 90-day chunk. So let's talk about website. So let's say that you, you, you really need some attention there. So basically, it's a new website structure with better SEO functions, your daily activities, how to locate great, amazing content that engages, how to rank well, not just uh, SEO, but also um, SEM, which is a difference. Um, alternate sources for traffic to tap into, uh, something that's called welcome mats for lead capture, live chat sliders, widgets, retargeting, tracking cookies, and landing pages. So imagine how it would feel to finally have all of that figured out. It's where you can just look back and go, oh, nailed it. Next. <laughs> what, how much time would it cost you? Would you have to invest to learn all of this and actually get it done? Or alternatively, if you were to pay someone to get it all done, how much would you spend? Because even on the low end, a cheap, a cheap, really cheap website's about 500 bucks to get one built out if you're just paying somebody for one. Or there's the seemingly cheap websites, but they have those never-ending monthly fees. On the low end, 25 bucks for a real, real cheap website or 100 bucks a month for a slightly better website. If you want something custom, anywhere from 1,500, 2,500, they, they go all the way up to 10 grand, no joke. All right, but then learning the SEO process, learning how to drive traffic, and waiting through all the misinformation that's out there, most of what's being taught, guys, you really have to take with a grain of salt. The design, are you going to learn it and how to design everything in high conversion graphics, or are you going to pay somebody to do it? Because I've, I've talked to a lot of people, so well, I'll just, I'll just teach myself how to do it. But in 99.9% .9 of the cases, guys, that's flat out the most expensive way to do something. Because what I've learned is that a hyper-focused loan officer that catches on really quick with technology, that's about six months of learning. For the average loan officer, that's well over a year. I would, I'd guesstimate about 18 months, so that's about a year and a half. How much does that cost you an opportunity cost to go six months to a year and a half without having a proper website, web presence, if you will? Let's say that on a, on a very, very, very conservative note, let's say that you would have pulled in six closings through a proper web presence. Now, most guys are doing double, triple that with a proper web presence, but let's just go very conservative. Well, since you're currently in learning stage and didn't have it built, you missed out on those six closings. How much did that cost you? How much could you have paid and still turned a profit if if you had all this done and actually had those six closings. We can reframe that. Let's say the lead generation quadrant or theme, if you will. How much would it cost you to properly learn how to run ads, pay-per-click, retargeting, ad management, copywriting, lead capture pages, redirects, all those things? How much would it cost you to, to through trial and error to learn all of that? I know my own personal education. I still have my notes. I still have my receipts. I spent about $29,000 in ads. This was when I first really started getting into running PPC ads. Okay. I spent about $29,000 in ads. And this was back when ads were dirt cheap. I mean, we're talking 15, 10, 15 cents cost per click. Uh, but in addition to that, I had to pay for three in-person events that I flew out to, hotel costs plus the events themselves. I took five courses and I hired a coach. I hired a coach for 60 days. So that, that's about another $14,000 on top of that $29,000. That's what was spent for me to get to the point where I just considered myself, you know, 
pretty good. You know, not not great, but pretty good. And we're, we're, we're talking 10 plus years ago, so adjust for inflation there too. <laughs> uh, but bottom line is a good PPC strategy, guys, can easily bring in multiple closings per month. How much is it costing you to ignore this part of your business? What is the opportunity cost? So that's another quadrant. That's two out of four quadrants that get hammered out during during the mastermind. But here's the thing, guys, is as has been the trend for a while now, is with my masterminds, I only can work, since I'm limiting, I'm, I can only work with a limited number of people for the year. My goal is 100 loan officers to reach that additional six-figure goal, okay, on top of their existing income. I can only work with so many folks to do that and give the proper service. So because of that, I have to be very choosy. So it's not something you can just go and buy. I can't just give you a link and you go out and buy it. So if you're interested in participating in the 2017 Mastermind, we begin in 10 days, guys, just 10 days. If you want to participate with me, here's the link. Here's the link right here, 2017faststart.pagedemo.co. Okay? Or you can email me. But here's why I want you to go to this link, guys, is the link is where those questions were that we were talking about earlier today. Remember I said there's rewards for filling it out. One of the questions is very simple, is if you're wanting to chat with me, right? And all you got to do is leave your, your phone, an email, and name, and let me know. So do you want to speak to Chad? It's yes or no. And then leave your contact information there and answer the questions. You know why I do this, guys? It's kind of a test. It's, it's I want to work with action takers. And I know it's only, what, five questions total? But you'd be surprised how many folks go, ah, I don't have time for that. And they don't fill it out. And they don't follow the instructions. And that's that's not a good way to kick things off. I want to work with action takers and people that, that know how to follow the instructions. Because during the mastermind, your success or failure directly hinges on following the instructions and taking the action. Don't spend money with me if you're not going to take the action, guys. It's that simple. Go spend it on something, go have a great meal with your family or, or something, you know, a hobby or, or do something with it that you're going to get something out of because you're not going to get much out of paying for training and instruction and masterminds if you're not going to take the action, okay? I'd, I'd rather you spend it on something else. All right. Uh, yeah, Tom, I've put in the HTTP. Um, so, yeah, basically I'm getting some questions about this, guys. Um, okay, so so yeah, it begins in 10 days. So I see a lot of you guys were asking, when does it start? It starts in 10 days, all right? So we're early January because we want to get an early start for the new year, all right? Um, okay, and uh, is there how much? All right, well, the way, the way it works, guys, is I see some folks asking, you know, how much does it cost? Okay, there's different ways that I run my masterminds. So I've kind of gotten away from just off the shelf type, okay, something costs this much, go and buy it, All right? I do still have some websites and programs out there, but what I found is that the more customized I've been flexible I've been with my training and instruction for folks, the better results have become over the years. So there are, if, if depending on where you're at with your business and how much you need us involved or how much you need from us, there are packages that are as little as $2.99, all right? And th these are monthly masterminds, right? So it's two ninety nine a month, and then there's some they go up from there. So let's say you come in and say, "Well, um, I want to do the mastermind, but I want you guys to take care of generating all my realtor appointments for me and making me look good and all this, this, and that." All right, so I'm going to delegate some of those responsibilities to you guys. Okay, great. Well, that's obviously going to be more than the two ninety nine, right? I don't lock anybody into anything. So if you come on board and you just want to do one quadrant of, "Hey, I'm just going to do the first ninety days to hit those goals, and that's all I need." then great. You can, you can, you don't have to do the, the other three. It's a month to month program. All right. I don't lock anybody into anything with those. But if you want to be considered, you do got to reach out to me. You can send me an email here as well to see Weber at averagejoelo.com. Or here's the link again. And yeah, make sure you put in the HTTP colon slash slash. Let me go ahead and send you guys the link in your chat box real quick. You're going to see a clickable link popping up. All right, so I'm typing that out now for you.
All right, so I just gave you that link. I'm also going to give you my email. If you want to be considered, because we, we do have to chat with you first, guys. i got to make sure we're a good fit. So if you want to talk. All right, there we go. So, yeah, if you want to talk, just let me know. And, and be prepared to answer some questions. I'm sure you'll have questions for me as well. <laughs> um, and, yeah, you can email me to cweber at averagejoelo.com. All right, so Greg, um, it's saying to, it's not letting me submit. Uh, what what browser are you using? I know sometimes depending on on browsers, it can things can get a little goofy. I would try I would try opening in another browser if for whatever reason if if it's giving you a rough time, I would just try a different browser would be my recommendation. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, perfect. So that worked. Okay, so it looked like a lot of you guys, when you switched browsers, saying, okay, that worked. So, all right. And if worst case scenario, guys, just email me. Perfect. All right, now I'm scrolling through the questions here, so I'm not, not ignoring you guys now. I'm just going through the questions, see if I can get these answered for you. Let me just pop back to the main screen here in the meantime. So I'm, I'm very stoked. I'm just absolutely excited about working with you folks because we got some really cool topics we're going to cover. And I've been working really, really hard on hammering out some fresh content, some fresh strategies, some new angles, all that good stuff. But these are just a look at some of the things that's going to be covered through these modules. Let me throw those links out there for you again. So cweber at averagejoelo.com. Just email me and say, hey, Chad, would like to chat with you about the mastermind. Okay, so yeah, there's a whole lot of questions here. <laughs> and if you guys have any more, if I've missed you, go ahead and um, retype them in if you need to. I'm just going through as we speak. Go over there. Okay, so it looks like in that bottom one, guys, just pop your email into that bottom question. It looks like for whatever reason the browser was limiting to just putting in the email. So if you just give me your email, that should be good. All right. Okay, so is there a minimum is there a minimum commitment? Um, no, no, there's not, Sean. No. No, with with the way we work, guys, it's it's just um, we get you rolling in there. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I, I'm getting a bunch of questions on the documents. Let me pull those up again so you guys can get a view of those questions um, and in some of the structure. There we go. I'm going to go back up to the top here. So this is for structuring your week and planning your week out. So I'm actually redoing this one here. Um, this one I made about, oh, about a year ago. And I'm, I'm updating it now to be more focused on my, um, my quarterly quadrants. But as you can see, it still is really taking what would otherwise be flying by the seat of your pants. <laughs> and adding some structure and organization to it because that's really where we start to fall short of hitting our goals is when when we lose that infrastructure and that's what this guide is meant to do just through quick filling this out it's hey what are my my three priorities for the week now again i'm updating a lot of this for my 90 day quadrants but it's going to be very similar just with some uh, slightly different focus and verbiage but the one that i really like 
is this question right here of clearing the deck. What will I finish this week? You know how you got something on your to-do list and you start it, but you don't finish it. Then you get to the end of your week. It's Friday. You know what? I'm going to hang back, enjoy my weekend a little bit. I'll get it done next week. But then the new week brings with it all sorts of new challenges. And next thing you know, it's being put off to the next week after that. And then after a couple of weeks, you, you've pretty much forgotten about it until it gets, you know, forced into your face again. <laughs> right. Um, so that's what this really helps with here is uh, by ending your week and starting your week with filling these out really, really helps you um, identify those things that otherwise would have slipped through the cracks. You know, what are my distractions or interruptions? Because, um, you know, we're in an age of social media and instant contact, text messaging, you know, screen pops, alerts, just everything is always uh, struggling for your attention. And that's what this really does is it, it focuses. Uh, will there be a replay? Absolutely. Absolutely, Craig, there will be. So I have recorded it just so long, just so long as GoToWebinar has cooperated. <laughs> so my productivity accelerators, so that's basically, um, you know, hey, am I, what am I outsourcing? You know, what am I doing to leverage my time? What am I delegating? You know, let's say I'm working with realtors. Could I have them taking care of something? For example, you know, am I tapping into FISBOs? You know, that's, that's a, uh, a leverage point as well, using their property as bait to capture more home buyers in the marketplace. So I'm just scrolling through here slowly because a lot of you guys wanted to, to have another glance at some of the questions and some of the items on that list. These are the small actions that I was talking about earlier in the call. So again, I view small actions as something that takes less than an hour to do. Okay, then you got your filler tasks. So these are things that are that need to be done, but they're usually quick and easy. So let's say, for example, I don't know. Um, oh, you know what? My my email sucks. You know, the, the email client that I'm using sucks. I need to switch it over to a new email client. You know, well, that's probably only going to take me about 20 minutes. You know, it's not exactly a high payoff activity, but at the same time, uh, it's something that needs to be done because I'm losing lots of time by using this inefficient email system. So I'm switching over to a new email client. Boom. Okay. That's, that's a filler task, you know, those types of things, things that are 30 minutes or less. You know, these are my personal tax, tasks, things that need to be done. You know, these are, can be anything from social commitments to appointments, you know, a dental appointment, paying bills, uh, going out and getting my, my workout for the week, for the day, you know, those sorts of things. All right, so by being this planned out, guys, um, you're going to start hitting things a lot quicker. All right. All right. So yeah, Tom, this this is yeah, this is a little bit different um, than the uh, LO community. So yeah, this this is uh, rolling out in January. So um, so yeah, Mike. Uh, so Mike, I see you're asking if this is something that you're in. So yours um, is a little bit different, but. Um, there also is a lot of overlap as well. So, so if this is something that you were interested in participating in, it, it would probably be with modification because I, I wouldn't want you to have to pay for a bunch of overlap in certain things. Um, so it, it would be something that would have to be customized to where there would only be certain quadrants that you would need to participate in because of the amount of overlap with what you're participating in. All right. So, uh, but yeah, I'd be more than happy to answer that for you. Okay. Okay. So uh, Mike is asking uh, Chad, will you be emailing us the daily planner on the screen now? So um, yeah, you're you're going to be getting some some downloads that will help you to plan better. All right. So it's going to have some questions and all that fun stuff for you, um, and kind of help you schedule out your days and weeks. So those are going out after after today's call. Um, and then for those of you that were asking about, oh, here's the big rocks one. So let, I forgot to pull this one up too. So the big rocks is basically going through and actually applying a label to what your big tasks are versus your smaller tasks. Okay. Because really it's all about fitting things into your schedule through proper time blocking 
and that means prioritizing. So instead of letting these filler tasks get in the way and then trying to fit in these high priority things and say, no, you know what, I can't, I just don't have time to do it. Um, we get those high priorities in there first. And then the filler tasks, we squeeze them in where they can be. But we need to have the discipline and the amount of commitment to get the big boulders, if you will, <laughs> cleared off the table first because those are the ones that pay the bills, right? So this is basically asking yourself the tough questions, you know. How does where you currently spend your time compare to your big rocks, you know, your real priorities, you know, basically. So compared to ideal situation here shown in this image, what are you really doing with your time? And, you know, what, what does this tell you? You know, what needs to change? What could you do differently? What are you willing to change to prioritize your time better? You know, it's asking these, smash these obstacles. What could get in the way? If you're going to self-sabotage yourself, how would you do it? You know, it's asking those tough questions. It's not comfortable to sit down and kind of pick yourself apart a little bit, you know, and be critical of yourself. It's not fun. But that's what separates the high performers from the average performers, is the high performers will do it anyways. And I'll tell you what, from an emotional energy and personal energy standpoint, you feel good that you're the one that actually went and did those things that a lot of people would avoid, like the plague. Like, hey, I did the tough things. That means I'm going to enjoy the payoff. I'm going to enjoy the results. Right? Okay, so I'm looking right now. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Okay, so we're already at 29 requests. Um, I'll be contacting you guys as I go along for those of you wanting to chat about getting in on the mastermind. Because, yes, we begin in 10 days. And um, I do need to speak to you before taking on anyone within this mastermind, okay? Because I interview every single person. We got to be picky because, you know what, I intend for every single person participating to knock it out of the park. And that means I need to be chatting with doers, with action takers. So so we got 29 folks. So basically, um, between now and beginning, I have room for 15, 15 folks, okay? So if you have not put in your request now, I would strongly recommend that you do so quickly because no, I can't make exceptions, guys. It's not that I, I want to be a jerk, but you know what? Um, I've set the limits based on what I personally can tend to. Yes, I would love to take on more clients. You know what? That makes me more money. That's great. That's wonderful. But you know what? If it results in less service for you because it's overextended, then that doesn't help anyone. All right? So that's why I limit. If I'm going to help you hit these incredible goals, then I need to give you guys incredible service. Right. So just shoot me an email. If you're wanting to be um, considered as a participant. OK, so, uh, yeah, Britt, you're 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 going to be getting started here. Um, yes, you're a part of that. So, yes, you will be taking part in the quadrants. Absolutely. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so here's a bigger question here. All right, so uh, Sheila, uh, Chad, do you pair us with other loan officers at the same level of production, or do you have a group for loan officers with experience and producers at a higher level? Um, generally speaking, that, that's a good question, and it's, it's kind of difficult to, to answer just because, um, you know, I don't deliberately say, okay, only top producers in this particular group and, you know, new newbies in this group. Um, and the reason for that is because what we found in our group is about 60 to 70 percent, and, and there's no scientific method to, to that number. I'm just kind of guesstimating just based off my own, you know, anecdotal, um, my, my observations here. So about 60 to 70 percent of the folks that participate in these types of groups are higher performers. They tend to be the above average performers. That's what we generally find. We do get some newbies in there too, though. 
But what I found is that nice mix, that nice mix really does result in some excellent, excellent feedback because part of the value of the masterminds folks is that you guys are able to communicate within the um, project management software that I was showing you earlier. It's almost like a mini social media and that everybody can talk to everybody and you can send each other instant messages. You don't have to email. You just click a button and a boom, you, instant message just goes right out to that person. Um, and it's the sharing and the feedback that really, really helps. Okay. So uh, we're, we don't limit just to, hey, you have to be a top performer to be in this group, but about 60 to 70% of them tend to be uh, higher level performers. And then the remainder tends to be more kind of like mid, middle, middle of the pack type performance. So, you know, we'll get some folks in there doing, hey, yeah, you know, I just did my 15 loans this month. You know, and then we get the folks in, well, you know, I did my six or seven, you know, and I'm, I'm good with that. You know, so everybody has their own goals. But that also doesn't necessarily um, slow down performance either in, in case anybody's wondering, well, you know, if I have a couple newbies in the group. No, no, we, we're, we're not um, holding back releasing training just because there might be newer folks in the group. Because really, um, the way everything's broken down is um, simple steps. Here's what you need to get done to reach this level or to reach that level, okay? And yes, we do have different um, price points for different budgets. You know, um, if you're more, hey, I'm going to be a DIY type guy, I'm going to, you know, do it yourself, um, you know, then, you know, obviously the lower cost that I mentioned earlier, $299. But then we get folks that say, hey, you know what, I'm already, you know, a higher level performer and I need to delegate and outsource, you know, can you take care of this and that and add this module and add that module? You know, then we'll, we'll customize the price point for those folks. Um, yeah, for those of you guys who are having trouble with, um, I, I'm not sure why the software that we're using is um, doing this, but basically I'm, I'm getting some folks uh, reporting that when they're trying to fill out the questions on the site, that question number five, that final question for whatever reason is uh, giving them trouble. Just put your email in there for now. Just put your email in there because for whatever reason it's in certain browsers it's just not allowing you to submit a name and a phone and an email. You know I preferred I preferred having the, the, the name and phone so here's what I would recommend guys and my apologies it was not doing this earlier I'll have to contact um, uh, the, the, the landing page software about that. So what I would just ask that you do is I would still like to know your name so I know who I'm speaking to and if you want to chat I will need your phone number so please just put it in one of the other question boxes. See one, one of these large text boxes? You know, so once you answer the question, so just put your answer and then just put your name and your phone number if you're wanting to chat. If you're just filling it out because you just want the documents, um, that's fine, then you don't need to put your phone number and, and name in there. Um, but for those of you that want to be considered for the mastermind, I, do, I, I would greatly appreciate if you would still pop it in there for me so that makes it easier for us to reach out as opposed to bouncing back and forth in the email. <laughs> and my apologies, guys. I, again, I, I had it tested, and for whatever reason, the goofy things not playing nicely with all the browsers, but you know, there, there goes technology, right? <laughs> all right. Awesome. Okay. So lots of great questions here. So I'm just scrolling through some more. Just pop this back up on the screen again for you. Awesome, Paul. Absolutely. Uh, Tom, if you've already emailed it to me, then you should be good to go, buddy. You should be good to go. All right, so, okay, so that worked. Okay, good deal, Lyle, good deal. All right, awesome, Vaughn. Nice to see you here, Vaughn. All right, so I'm seeing lots of uh, familiar names here, so awesome, guys. So how do you guys feel about uh, 2017 then? 
How you guys feeling about the new year? Still got a lot of you guys on this call here. I know I'm excited. See, uh, here's here's the interesting thing about the whole interest rate, quote unquote, stuff that we're talking about. Um, and uh, let me let me see if I can pull up a snapshot here, because you, you'll read some wildly differing opinions on what the rising rate environment means to the mortgage industry. But here's the thing: is Yes, refis tend to melt away. Doesn't mean it goes away completely, obviously, but we do tend to see it melt away. But with the purchase market, if you niche yourself and you kind of carve out a little corner for yourself, and that means a high-performing website, some automation, and high conversion follow-up. If you add those three elements it doesn't matter what the market's doing. I mean, I'm I, I'm still looking at, um, you know, 06, 07, 08. I mean, when things just absolutely went to hell and people were freaking out and getting, I mean, we had a mass exit in the industry. Um, I mean, I, heck, at, at one point, what did we have? Over a quarter million loan officers, close to 300,000 active loan officers, and then uh, close to 120,000 exited the industry in just one year. But yet, the folks that I was working with, the high producers, the interesting thing is no difference. No difference to their income. Some of them even had their best year ever while everybody else was freaking out and sky is falling, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, is there's that core percentage of the population that has no choice but to move for you know everything from health reasons to hey I need to downgrade I can't afford this house anymore and then others hey I need my vacation home you got the successful folks I mean there's opportunity there so if if we are tapping into those niches folks and and we're being methodical about it the market can do whatever it wants you're still going to thrive. You can still grow. You can still have your best year. Yeah, David, uh, absolutely. So David said very, very concisely, sell value, not rates. And that's it. And the value, the value comes from, A, trust. When you talk, who listens? Do you have an audience? If you're, if you're make, taking notes on what questions to ask yourself, to help yourself build a business plan for the new year, ask yourself that question. When you talk, who listens? Why do they listen? Because your audience is your primary asset. When I say audience, audience can be interchanged with database. That can be interchanged with email lists. That can be interchanged with social media following, your audience. The people who see what you have to say on a regular basis. Do you blog? Well, who's your audience? Do you send out email blasts? Well, who's your audience? Do you make posts to Facebook? Well, who's your audience? Do you Instagram? Who's your audience? Do you tweet on Twitter? Who's your audience? Do you post videos to YouTube? Who's your audience? <laughs> A lot of questions, yes. But if you can answer those questions, then you can make them better. Because that's where our value comes from, is what do we have to say that these people care about? You know, it's 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 that trust. Do do they trust that you know what you're talking about? Do they trust that um, when you speak, you have their best interest in mind? Do they trust that they're going to get real answers and not a bunch of crap? Because there's so much misinformation out there, right? And that's what we focus on. That's what the mastermind is all about: is how do we build those assets? Because you can't just grab somebody and shake them and say, listen to me. <laughs> you got to earn that. And, and it's, it's earning that trust and building that asset, a.k.a. audience, 
That's the difference between adding an extra six figures this year or not. Because when we distill all the things that I've talked about in this webinar, my last webinar, and the webinar before that, and the webinar before that, if we distill all of it down to its core element, the core element is what assets do you have in this industry, who are they, and how much do they trust what you have to say. And if we can figure that part out for you, everything else becomes that much simpler and easier. And no, that's not to say that this is an easy business, but we can certainly simplify it and make it easier. Nobody wants it to be more difficult. And that's what my goal is in doing this Fast Start Mastermind, is I want to help you guys make things easier. I want you to uh, simplify things so that you can focus on the big priorities. So that means I got my work cut out for me. I understand that. And I'm really, really excited about working with you folks and uh, helping you add that additional six figures. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So scrolling through the questions again, see if there's any I missed. And, uh, yeah, we, we have a lot of them. Wow, 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 wow. So, yeah, Tom uh, Tom says he sees uh, opportunity for 2017. Uh, he was actively selling 9% interest rates in the years between 99 and 2000. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, remember those years. Holy crap. Um, yeah, people bought houses when they were 10%. So, Paul, yeah, rates should not dictate your success. Exactly. Well, Paul, um, you've been hitting some home runs here the not just this year but last year too I mean you boy you you just uh, absolutely crushed it so not to single you out or anything Paul but um, very inspirational so uh, I see names here with uh, people doing great things and it just uh, really really puts a smile on my face so absolutely Okay, I'm just um, scrolling through slowly, and I apologize, guys, but there's several hundred questions here. All right, so it looks like I've gotten to most of these. And if I have missed, then please, by all means, um, repost. I don't have a problem with it. It's, that doesn't bug me one bit, guys, if I missed your question. All right, so J uh, Jim said... Um, Chad, I had to jump on the phone a few times. Will this be repeated? Uh, Jim, I did I did record it. So I'll be shooting out a replay uh, YouTube link this evening. All right, Paul, absolutely. Um, okay, so one, two. All right, uh, yeah, uh, Manny, absolutely. Um, about the uh, the fax system, just um, shoot me an email on that, and I'd be happy to go over that with you. Absolutely. Okay, Tom, uh, Chad, can you give us the three the three things again? Um, okay, you might have to refresh my memory. My my apologies, Tom. When I when I get to talking, I mean, I just boom, I'm I'm just. I'm just rolling with it. So um, three things. Are you talking about the quadrants? Because I, I, I have four quadrants. Or were you talking about a previous slide? So I'm not sure what the um, what the, the three things that are that you're referring to that you want me to repeat. Is that a, a slide or? Okay, the, the elements that go into a high-performance website or? So the high, high performance website, okay, the the high traffic. Okay, let me go back to a previous slide here. You mean the automation and the high conversion? Because yeah, the the elements, um, yeah, the the elements are um, they go into your high performance website. Let me let me go back to the previous um, slide here. Give me just a moment, guys. I have to close out and scroll up. I'm, I'm guessing you, you might be talking about uh, this page here. Let's give it just a moment. Pop up in just a moment here. There we go.
Okay, so yeah, now, now I know what you're talking about. So yeah, basically um, distilling to your core elements, um, your, your high-performance website, um, in addition to that, you need your, your, your automation and your audience, your traffic. But your automation and high conversion. So those are the three elements that you really need when you distill things down to their core um, of, of what's going to mean the difference between a great year or just another average year. Because see, when it comes to your web presence, guys, it's very formulaic. And that's, that's what I like about it, is it's very scientific. There are some artistic elements involved in websites. Obviously, you want your website to look good. You want it to be easy on the eyes and whatnot. Um, but I'll clue you guys into a little secret. A poor website, and, and by, by poor website, I don't mean a crappy website, but I just mean a, a less than ideal, or let's, let's actually change that word to just an average website from a visual standpoint, but that is just laid out properly and structured properly, will exponentially outperform from a lead capture standpoint a beautiful, gorgeous website that is not properly structured and laid out. I mean, it's not even a contest. So just an average website, but that, in, that incorporates the proper elements and the proper structure will just absolutely eat the lunch of a beautiful, stunning website, but that is not structured properly. It's not even a contest. So that's, that's why um, when I talk about web presence, it being formulaic, I mean, it really is. It's, it's the scientific aspect of what needs to be there. Here's what elements need to be there. Here's what lead capture mechanisms need to be here. And here's the type of text and where it needs to be. And here's how it needs to be coded so that Google, Yahoo, and Bing love it and start showing you on the front. Right? If we have those elements present, it's not even a contest. Okay? So that's, that's why it's going to be one of the, uh, uh, a really, really big quadrant of the fast start mastermind. Because I need to get those elements taken care of with you ASAP. All right. So it still looks like we got quite a few folks here today. So did I, did I miss anybody's questions? Is there anybody here that has questions that I have not answered yet um, about the mastermind, about 2017, about your your, your, your business planning process. Um, remember, this; these are interactive, guys. Your, your questions, uh, I, I, I love them. Scrolling through, making sure I didn't miss any. So, yep, there we go. Get to that one. Okay, looks like got another message here. Uh, yeah, is it okay to email you? Yes, the cweber at averagejoelo.com. C. Weber at AverageJoeLO.com. That's what you want. If you guys want to be considered, please send me an email and um, just just tell me just tell me if you're sending me an email instead of filling out the form, uh, just tell me a little bit about what your goals are for the new year, where you're at currently, what your challenges are, and then we'll then we'll chat. We'll chat and see if it's a good fit. Okay, uh, Chad, do you have samples of the websites for this? Um, unfortunately, I do not. Um, we, we will shortly, but um, like I said um, earlier, though, the, these are brand new sites. These aren't some old crusty sites we're just handing out. These are brand new sites that we had created just for the mastermind. Okay. So that will um, we'll, we'll definitely be uh, rolling those out here very very shortly. But we begin in ten days, so um, my uh, my developers will have them probably rolled out within the next forty eight hours. Okay, Vaughn says, Chad, you're talking about multiple streams of income. Can you explain? Absolutely. Um, when I talk about multiple streams of income, really what that means is that. I, I guess the best way to describe it is not putting all our eggs in one basket. So let's say, um, all right, like the really stupid thing I did when I first became a loan officer <laughs> was 
Um, I mean, I just, I was working for a company that initially provided all the leads. And I mean, we had, we had a, a very large dedicated telemarketing center within the building that did all of our, um, provided all of our phone calls and leads. And so my first year in the business, I mean, I was loving it. My income was exploding and I thought, wow, this is awesome. But I had all my eggs in one basket. All my income was coming from refis. And then when there started to be little niggles about rates going up and, oh, man, you know, the, start seeing the news reports and articles that, you know, the, the um, refi business could shrink as much as 25, 30 percent, blah, blah, blah. And I, I was horrified. And that's when I realized, man, I'm really, really putting myself in a tough spot here. And that's when I realized that I needed to become more stable and self-reliant, multiple streams. Now, that doesn't just apply to whether, hey, I'm just doing purchases or I'm doing purchases plus refi. It could also apply to where your business is coming from. And I'll give you an example. SEO is wonderful, and I talk about SEO, and we all should be tapping into SEO. But what happens? What happens if 100% of my business is coming from SEO and Google makes an algorithm change and I'm no longer on the front page of Google? My business dries up overnight. So multiple streams means I need to be having loans coming in from more than just one source. The same with realtors. I've talked to loan officers who told me, hey, Chad, almost every single one of my closings this year has been from realtors. And that's, that's great that you have earned the trust of that many realtors and that you are so good at what you do that you can have, you know, your, your primary source of business coming from realtors. But at the same time, do yourself a favor and tap into some other sources because I would hate to see what happens if something happened and one of, you know, let's say a couple of the realtors, top producers moved away or got out of the business, you know, or whatever the case may be. I just want people to be stable. So Lyle says, yeah, that happened to me in the 90s. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I see a question about the tools and technology. Yes, access to my best tools, technology, and resources. Guys, you don't even know yet. <laughs> when I show you the cool stuff um, that I'm going to give you access to and the capabilities with the technology that, that I tap into for my own business, and uh, those that are masterminding with me are going to get access to it as well. These are things, these are... Um, Programs that I haven't even rolled out yet, these are going to be products probably around mid-2017. Some of this stuff is going to go on sale for, for loan officers to purchase um, at a monthly fee to have access to some of these tools. But those who are doing the mastermind with me, you get it first, and you get it half a year before anybody else. I have stuff that I haven't even shown anyone yet that's going to blow your mind when you see this stuff at work. It is so cool. Um, so anything that I am using in my business now, and these are tools that, yeah, I'll be charging, you know, on the low end for some of the stuff, just 40, 50 bucks a month. Some of it will be a hundred bucks a month or more uh, for folks to access later. But those who are in the mastermind with me, you get it. You get it too. You know, it, it's no extra fee. You get access to it. And yes, it will indeed give you a tremendous, tremendous competitive advantage. So these are mostly tools for your web presence that are going to give you capabilities and functionality that um, are just incredible. I'll, I'll let me. I'll share one. I'll just share one item with you here. I'll describe it to you. And this is one of the lesser tools. This is just one of the really small tools. But I'll give you an example of functionality. When we talk about websites and we talk about blogging and we talk about content, what does that mean? That means that you need to be sharing articles and you need to be sharing content. You need to be blogging. You need to be posting to Facebook. And a lot of loan officers hate that. You know, when they hear about that, they say, man, you know what? That really sucks. I don't have time to write all this stuff and come up with cool stuff to talk about. You know, I'm just too busy. One of the solutions or workarounds to that is to find content out there that's already great, articles that are already being shared, articles that people are already reading and that are interesting and drive home your point that you're trying to make. So let's say that I found an article that talked about why 2017 is still an awesome time to buy a home and, you know, here's the best loan products, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's an article that I probably want to share. But what happens if I go into Facebook and I go into my blog and my websites and I just post this link? People might enjoy the content, but what are they doing? When they click on it, they're going away 
from my website. They're going away from my Facebook. They're going away from my YouTube channel. They're going away from me, and that can be a bad thing. But one of the softwares, again, this is one of the lesser programs I'm going to share with you guys, is a solution to that. It allows you to share articles such as that so that you don't always have to be writing new stuff, but it encapsulates those articles with a frame of your information. In other words, I share the link onto Facebook. People click on it and they go and they read the article. Let's say it came from, um, I don't know, Bloomberg or Forbes or one of those you know, money magazines. But the whole time at the top of the site, they see a picture, a little thumbnail picture of my face, my phone number, my website, and says brought to you by Chad Weber or shared by Chad Weber. You know, and as a call to action, you know, click here to read more great articles that brings them back to my site again. So I can use it to share articles and actually drop tracking cookies for retargeting purposes, get them back to my website and still brand myself while sharing content that endorses everything that I'm saying. That's just one of the little things that you're going to get access to. Um, and it's super easy to use, by the way. It takes just moments to set it up, and it's really cool. And it's little bitty things like that that give you competitive advantages to allow you to save time and do things more efficiently and in a superior manner to what your competition is doing. You don't have to be an author. You don't have to keep coming up with a bunch of cool stuff to write all the time. It's nice when you do. But when you're busy and you got a bunch of stuff on your plate, when you're able to just go out and, oh, here's a great article. Uh, I'm just going to share this. Oh, I'm going to brand it by myself. Um, boom. All right, ready to go. Now that people see your face, see your articles, they remember you. You're the one that shared it, and they can click a link and get back to all your stuff and find more articles like that. That's just one example of technology that will be shared with you guys. Right? So it's feedback for me reviewing your campaigns and what it is you're doing. Um, critiquing, and then the accountability from the group. All of these things, guys, are what make this mastermind um, such a powerful tool for 2017. So I'm um, stoked, absolutely stoked, and looking forward to chatting with you guys. Uh, shoot me an email if you haven't already, um, or go to the link and fill it out, and I will be in touch with you guys ASAP. Now, in advance, I'm just saying this. Um, please don't get upset if you don't hear from me right away. Again, I tend to get flooded with a lot of requests in a very short period of time. So I cannot be everywhere at once, but uh, we will get in touch with you guys, and I look forward to chatting with you. And if it's not a good fit, it won't be a good fit for everyone. It's like I said, if um, I'm, I'm not here to hard sell anybody into anything. It's like I said, I would rather you, if you feel like you're not going to stick with and follow the plans and instructions, I would rather you go spend the money elsewhere. Just go do something else with it. I don't want to um, take money from somebody that I can't help if they're not going to stick with the plan or follow the instructions. But if you are an action taker and you're a doer and you want to make this your best year yet, then let's chat and we'll see um, how we can take it to the next level. All right. Okay, so I'm scrolling through. It seems like some more questions here before we wrap up. So, Chad, what would you say the biggest difference, advantage of your mastermind is over the other options out there? Marketing animals, Doran Aldana, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so, yeah, there's, there's lots of programs out there for loan officers. Exactly right, Jeff. Um, the primary difference, um, no, first off, primary difference has been doing this since, what, 2000, 2005? So go, over 11 years now, I've been doing this training with, with loan officers. And really what that's allowed us to do is to really, really zero in on how best to help loan officers, you know, with experience. And when you've been around for so long and worked with so many thousands and thousands of loan officers, it really does give you a unique perspective. So what we've done, Jeff, with our program is uh, we've kind of distilled things with this mastermind to focus on um, the biggest reasons for loan officers failing in the past. Even if they failed with programs in the past, even if they failed with one of my programs in the past. You know, one of our bread and butter programs, guys, was the Loan Officer Marketing Lab. And as much as I love it, um, our stick rate was phenomenal. But when people would 
leave the program, it was primarily, guess what the number one reason was? When I would get an email saying, hey, Chad, I need to cancel my, my lab account, it was almost always, you know what, I love the information, it's amazing, you obviously know your stuff, but I'm just not putting it into action. I just feel too overwhelmed. There's just too much stuff, blah, 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 those types of things. And I heard them loud and clear because they're not just making that stuff up. You guys are busy. You got a million different things out there, right? So what we've done with this program is to help with that, I showed you guys the dashboard to the project management software. That's directly in response to those types of loan officers that would say, you know what, I just don't know what to be doing from a day-to-day -day basis or from a weekly basis. And having a project manager where you log in and everything is self-contained in one area, everything from your calendar, your checklist, to-do list, and the ability to just click a button and have an instant message sent over to me. All of that in one place. That's the primary advantage. Is it's not just the information. Now, also, I will tell you guys that when it comes to pay-per-click, I have yet to see another program out there, and I've, I've, I've seen a lot of the programs out there. Um, you know, it's not uncommon for us to spend fifty, sixty thousand dollars in a month on PPC guys in the mortgage industry because, again, I have a dedicated team that does PPC hands-off for mortgage companies. So that's another huge advantage is that we don't just teach this stuff. We actually do it, and we do it to a high level. When you're able to spend fifty, sixty thousand dollars in a month on paid traffic in the mortgage industry, you get to test and tweak a whole lot more. We do more in a month than most people do in a whole year on their PPC. So that's just another thing that I wanted to share. Um, that's another big difference is uh, we, we, we use and we're teaching you the exact strategies that we're using on a mass basis. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of other differences as well, but those, those are the big ones that I like to focus on because um, where most failures occur is either A, when somebody's um, being taught and implementing theory that hasn't been truly tested or B when even if the information is good but they're just overwhelmed and not sure how to put one foot in front of the other because it's just crushing amounts of things to do and take care of. Um, you know what we've taken here with the project manager and the daily tasks and to-do list is designed to just remove all that doubt and just say hey let's focus on these daily activities and then by the time you reach the end of your week you've had a good week. So having a couple good days turns into a good week. And then when you have a couple good weeks, you have a good month. When you have a good month, you have a good quarter. Boom, we're done. We're done with quadrant number one. Now let's wash, rinse, repeat, but with theme number two, which may be social media or lead generation or realtor referrals or whatever the case may be. So it's taking those small victories and turning them into absolute home runs. All right. So great question. All right, guys. So thank you so much. Um, and I hope I've gotten to you guys all. <laughs> and I, um, I thank you guys very much for joining me and sticking around and asking great questions. And it looks like, wow, we two full hours. So, um, yeah, excited you guys stuck around for two hours. And I uh, will get an email shout out to you guys by this evening with the replay and uh, look forward to chatting with you guys very soon. So thanks again. Make it an awesome day and I hope you have an absolutely wonderful rest of 2016. Let's hit the ground running for 2017 and let's just hit some home runs together. All right, guys, make it a great one. We'll chat soon.